Hey there gamers and welcome back to the channel. So the patch notes released for the Lucky Dragon update and last update for the Daisy update, I remember posting a video to my YouTube where I picked apart the patch notes and we talked about them, but a whole lot of you guys in the comments were like, we want a live reaction. Can you do a live reaction next time? Give me a live reaction. So today when the patch notes dropped at two, I intentionally did not read them, which killed me. You know, I was just dying to know what they said but so many of you guys asked for a live reaction that i figured i would wait until i was live on twitch and then i would record that experience so i could put it on youtube so here you are anyway as you can see we have our twitch friends down here in the comments as well so uh twitch friends say hello youtube meet twitch twitch meet youtube and if you would like to be a part of these videos you can do so just by heading on over to my twitch channel and hitting that follow you'll find a link to my twitch and discord server in the video description down below before we get started with all of this if you want to do me a very big favor consider hitting that like button as it helps more people discover my channel and consider subscribing for more disney Room at valley and gaming content and with that out of the way, I'm ready to look into these patch notes. Okay, so first off, just the usual greeting here from Dreamite Valley, it seems. In this update, you'll encounter a new realm, two new villagers, and a whole host of widely requested gameplay improvements that relate to features like edit mode, your wardrobe, and dream snaps. Ooh, interesting. Prepare yourself. Disney Dreamite Valley's The Lucky Dragon update arrives on June 26, 2024. Check out all the details below. All right, so right off the bat there, very interested in what they've changed with Dream Snaps features. I think that's probably going to be my big interest moving forward because as you know, Dream Snaps are very central to me as a as a player. It's like my favorite thing about the game. Very interested to see what the kind of changes they have in store for that. So first up, we have new content. A new realm door opens. Visit Mulan's realm and put your skills to the test in a rustic training camp surrounded by lush mountains. All right, no surprise there. I mean, we We've already seen some teasers of this. Two new characters, also not a surprise. Mulan and Mushu arrive with determination and spirit in equal measure. Take on brand new friendship quests and earn unique items as you welcome these two into the valley. Next up, a new star path, Majesty and Magnolias. Introduces a wide range of new rewards from a dream style for Mulan to floating kites and paper lanterns to adorn your valley. So same items we saw in the star path teaser. They're not really giving us much much else uh, to know about here. I can't wait to see the star path for myself. Next up, we have Celebrate, the release of Disney and Pixar's Inside Out 2 with an in-game event, complete memories inspired by the film to unlock new emotion-themed animal companions. Okay, so far, everything we've read has just been stuff they've already teased. Show your pride with a collection of new free items claimable via a series of in-game codes. Keep an eye out for a blog post on June 27th, which will include more details and the codes. Okay, very cool. So the day after the update, the update's gonna drop on the 26th, and on the 27th, we're gonna get a blog post with some new pride rewards. I know a lot of people were very curious about that because they have posted some teasers including some new popcorn buckets and some other items so it's good to finally have some news on that i know a lot of people have been asking about that so that's good to see get ready for a day at the beach with a new signature bundle the premium island getaway house bundle interesting we got a new bundle coming in Inspired by Disney's Lilo and Stitch, offers a wide range of customization items, including a dream style for Stitch, a beachside house style, and a surfboard glider, as well as island-inspired clothing items and furniture. Okay, very cool. So we're getting another house bundle. The last one we had was really good, that one that came with Belle. Now, I didn't like the Belle dream style, but the house that came with it and that dream light projector were just chef's kiss. They were so good. This sounds really, really cool. I'm looking forward to seeing the premium house itself. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll get a teaser for this before it even drops. Maybe on Tuesday, they'll give us a look into it. I'm sure we have some more news about this coming soon. Next up, it says help Remy expand on his culinary services with Remy's special deliveries, repeatable quests. Deliver food orders to villagers around the valley in exchange for special rewards. 
rewards. Very interesting. I wonder what kind of special rewards we're getting into. Yeah, I wasn't really expecting, I didn't have uh, Uber Eats for Shea Remy or Shea Remy DoorDash on my patch note bingo cards, but uh, yeah, here we are. That's that, that could be pretty cool. I wonder what kind of rewards we're going to see from that. Next up, it says weekly rotations to look forward to. Keep an eye out for new optional items in the premium shop alongside some returning favorites as well as new weekly dream snap challenges and rewards okay i mean that's pretty standard you know new premium shop stuff i don't think anybody's surprised there especially with how many premium items they pumped out during the daisy update we knew we were going to see a lot and thankfully it looks like the last item here says new shipment alert scrooge mcduck store has received a new batch of goods for sale Okay, very, very nice. I'm hoping we get some really cool Mulan items and who knows what else may be appearing in Scrooge's store. Lord knows players that are on a lot need some more items in Scrooge's shop, especially clothing. It's been way too long since I had anything pop up on the clothing side, I kind of miss it. Even when we do have new clothes in an update, there'll be like two things that pop up over there and then it's empty again. So I would just love to see you know, a bunch of new clothing coming into the game. I don't think we'll see that much new stuff, but I'm excited for some new stuff. Ooh, I can already see. So we have furniture mode here and down here we have dream snaps. I'm so excited to get into dream snaps. All right, improvements, edit mode and furniture. Now, if you were unaware, we actually did a video on this on Sunday. They did tease some of these features. So I probably already know about a few of them, but I'm sure I don't know about all of them. So let's take a look. Adjusted edit mode so that you may continue to place items of a given furniture item without returning to the furniture menu so long as you own one or more additional copies of that item. So for this, I'm very happy to see this is going to be a big time saver. Added the ability to duplicate a place furniture item that you have selected in edit mode so long as you own one or more additional copies. Very nice here as well. Added the ability to replace all connected pieces of a given path or fence with a different style so long as you own enough pieces to copy it. This is something I'm beyond excited for again we already knew about this a couple of days before they made that announcement i traded out all of the central path in my plaza for that new main street path just to see how it looked and i didn't even like it but it took me so long to like repave my whole path and then i looked at it and i was like nah i'm gonna go back and then i had to repave it all again there's so many other areas where i want to do that but it just takes way too long so the fact that we're just going to be able to swap it is just really exciting to see because I think it's going to allow myself and many other players to really experiment with what pathing they utilize in different biomes. And yeah, I think this is one of the best editing mode changes we've ever seen. Adjusted path and fence placement when using a controller to more easily set tile by tile placement in the cardinal directions. All right, well, this is also good to see. I know... As a PC player, whenever I'm playing Dream My Valley and I'm decorating, I almost always use my mouse and keyboard. However, I do play the game on my Steam Deck as well, which is kind of like a Switch. You know, you have this big handheld device with its controller options. And a lot of the times I make my dream snaps on that, or I just don't want to be at my PC anymore after editing and streaming. I just want to go like lay down in my room. So I'll play on my Steam Deck. And it always kind of irks me how finicky the decorating can be on controllers. So very nice to see some positive changes coming to these controller mechanics. Add in an option to view similar items when hovering over a furniture item in edit mode. Okay, well, this is interesting. So whenever you're hovering over something, I guess there's gonna be like a button you can press that'll give you similar items. So I, like, for example, if it's like a, a pot that you have on a counter, maybe it'll give you more dishware that you can choose from or more items that can be placed on counters. Either way, that's pretty neat. I think it'll make it a little bit easier to find certain items that you wanna utilize. You don't have to sit there and scroll through the all inventory for two, de two decades, you know? Next up, it says, adjusted the cursor to remain centered on the screen when using edit mode in exterior locations while using a controller. By how I'm reading this, if you're on controller, your entire window will always move around and the cursor will always stay in the center. 
So I don't know. I see some people in my chat right now that don't seem like they like the idea of it. I had to really think about it to like visualize what I think they're saying here, but I, I might like it. Some people I think are like, no, I don't like the way that sounds, but it might be good, you guys. It might be good on controller. I, I would wait and see. Maybe this will be, Pumpkin said it's, uh, it's an option. Adjusted the cursor to remain on screen when using edited mode while using a controller. Well, it doesn't specify that it's an option. I hope it is. I hope it's not mandatory. I think that would be the big problem. Now, if this is something we can toggle on and off because I, I do like playing on my controller but if i'm on my steam deck and it and it doesn't allow me to you know move my cursor around instead i have to move the whole frame then it might be a pain i don't know i think i'm gonna have to wait and see this in action before i really j pass judgment next up we have adjusted camera speeds in edit mode so that the camera moves slower while zoomed in and moves faster while zoomed out this is nice i just hope that i just hope it's not adjusted to like an extremely high degree i, I wasn't really bothered with how the camera moved in edit mode plus i shoot like a lot of my youtube videos in edit mode i do like the panning angles and stuff and i've always been all right with the speeds but this might be good i guess we're gonna have to see exactly how they've adjusted the speed so before i can really spectate on whether this is a pro or something i'm not gonna like i think i'm gonna have to see it for myself either way i'm really excited to dive into these features next up it says added the ability to hide the game user interface while in edit mode this is oh my god that's so good okay so as somebody that makes a lot of youtube videos i'm always going into furniture mode and then doing these like panning shots of my biome but then i have to crop out the whole menu and doing that lowers the resolution of the shot it makes it look more grainy but i would i want to capture it full screen but i don't like the user interface this is something i have always wanted to see i was not expecting this this is so cool and you already know if you love watching my youtube videos if you like seeing all these cool angles of my biomes you're going to see a lot more of that because we're going to be able to record and capture some really cool scenes now that i can hide that ui of course, I use third-party software to capture those scenes. Basically, what I do is I use my same stuff I'm broadcasting on here. I hit record, and it saves my gameplay footage. So what I can do is I can go into furniture mode, hide my UI, and take these awesome panning angled shots of my biomes and get these really cool, high-quality video scenes to put into my video. So yeah, this is, wow, I, I was not expecting that. Um, an, an ability to hide the, the UI in edit mode. We already have the ability to hide the UI in camera mode and I love it. So seeing this up here in edit mode is just something I did not expect. And I am just, I, this, this is great. This is great. Anyway, let's move on to the next topic, which might get me even more excited. We're going to dive into dream snaps. So if you know me, you know, dream snaps are like my primary focus. I was not expecting any big changes to dream snaps. So let's see what they've done here. First off, it says improved the user interface within the current challenge menu, making mandatory and bonus tags for a given challenge easier to read. I don't think the tags have ever been hard to read, but I guess on certain platforms, I can totally see it. So when you go to the Dream Snaps tab, if you're on Switch, those little tags at the bottom, they, they are really tiny. So since my screen is big, it's not too hard to see, but I, I think it is really good that they're making it more apparent. If you watched my Dream Snap tutorial that explains high value items and just how important it is to use items with all four tags, that's both mandatory and both bonus. And that's what gives your Dream Snaps good visibility. But yeah, I have a whole video on this. Uh, I'll link it in the video description down below. You can check it out. Yeah, I'm glad they're making it even more apparent just how important these high value items are. Next up, it says added the ability to view your Dream Snap submission for a given challenge within the voting and rewarding menus. Oh, I think I see what this is saying. Okay, okay. Basically, right now in the current challenge tab, we can see our current submission, but we can't see our submission that's up for voting and we can't see our submission that we got results for. So this feature is going to give a check submission button to each of these tabs, I think. You're going to be able to see the Dream Snap that you got results for. You're going to be able to see the Dream Snap that is currently getting votes. And you're going to be able to see your current submission that you have. As for me, I save all of my Dream Snaps to my device. I recommend you guys do that as well. Always save your Dream Snaps. One of the best rewards you get from a Dream Snap is that Dream Snap itself, in my opinion. So I always save them, so I always have them. But it is cool to be able to access them in-game a little bit better. I 
really hope they give us a way to like look at previous dream snaps as well like some kind of dream snap catalog next up it says added the ability to view the number of bonus tags a photo submission has fulfilled in the dream snap submission window oh my god it's about time dude this is really good to see. This is something I've just always wanted to see in Dream Snaps. One thing I think that messes up a lot of players is they get really hung up on that mandatory tag count. But yeah, it's really good to see them finally adding this in. Next up, it states added a toggle within the camera menu that allows players to make touch of magic furniture items invisible during Dream let's go oh my god touch of magic is relevant again why didn't this come with the daisy update you know the update that was entirely about touch of magic it's fine it's fine we got it now it's good i'm glad this is great really really happy this is coming into the game this is something that we've actually talked about on my stream so much i only utilize touch of magic items indoors right now no point in having touch of magic items outdoors because it's just gonna obstruct your dream snap submissions and i've always said and and people in my chat have always said we need a way to just toggle them off for dream snaps so it's it's a non-issue because it really sucks to have to go through your valley and pick up something that's eight biomes away you know you're in dazzle beach and it's in the back of frosted heights and you can't submit your photo because of you know it, it, it doesn't make sense you know to have to go pick up each one of these touch of magic items is such a headache and it just makes touch of magic irrelevant if you do want to be active in dream snaps so finally having a toggle in the camera menu that allows you to make them invisible for dream snap submissions is yeah this is absolutely massive i was really wondering what kind of stuff they were going to change with dream snaps and this this is big and not just big for snaps but big for touch of magic it's relevant again it's something we can finally enjoy using outdoors without being punished this is huge next up it says added a new filter when ordering furniture and clothing from scrooge's store that show items relevant to the current challenge Ooh, i like this okay this one is really nice as well and this is something else i've thought about too one thing i've done myself is whenever we have a dream snap challenge or you know just periodically i go to scrooge's and i make sure i own at least one of every item so anything i've got from scrooge i make sure i'm not out of anything whenever a dream snap challenge comes and and the reason that is at least decor challenges is because i don't want to miss the opportunity to use a good item because it didn't appear for me because i was out of it now i don't have to worry about that whenever the challenge comes if it's a decor challenge i can check out this tab to see if there are any items that pop up that are relevant to the challenge that I do not currently have in my inventory. I also have a strong suspicion that this new tab will be ordered just like the current Dream Snaps tab and high value items will be at the top. You are probably going to see items with all four tags followed by three tags, followed by two, followed by one. Probably gonna be built just like that. Removed tags from hairstyles and facial hair so that players don't have to compromise their personal style to meet Dream snap requirements interesting very interesting was anybody really feeling like they had to compromise i've never let the tags determine my hairstyle as long as you're using high value items you're going to to get good visibility on your snap so i don't know i i'm i'm, I'm kind of surprised to see this i think it's a non-issue in my entire history of dream snaps and we've had almost 50 dream snap challenges i've never once felt like i had to compromise my personal style to meet dream snap requirements i don't i you know i don't know but um Brees says i never notice hair tags yeah so hair usually does have like a, a handful of tags it's not very many hair almost never is high value so for an item to be high value in a dream snap it has to have four or three tags and that, you know that's what you would need for an item to technically be considered high value by that competition and that's what gives you more visibility in a dream snaps challenge but hair is pretty much never high value if at most, in almost every challenge I've seen, most hairstyles just have one or two tags, and I just ignore them. I don't even really use them, and I still constantly get in the top 100 and top 500. I I, I just don't really see it as a as a huge issue. Um, but interesting nonetheless. Maybe it was an issue for some other players. Maybe some players were just feeling like they always were forced to use a hairstyle that had a tag that was part of that challenge. Uh, so I, I don't think it was a huge issue, but I, I'm I'm not mad about the tags being removed here 
I don't think this is a bad change. Or hairstyles have never even had enough tags to actually give you an advantage in dream snaps. Your overall number of tags is irrelevant at the end of the day. What's really relevant in a dream snaps challenge is how many high value items you're using. That's what's actually relevant. So getting one or two extra tags from a hairstyle doesn't give you any kind of advantage. So I've never cared about the hairstyle tags, you know? I, I use the ones that are good for the challenge. Like for the candy one, I used the hairstyle with the lollipop in it, you know? It just makes sense. I never even knew hair had tags, <laughs> said Shelby. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it does have tags. You can actually see the tags each hairstyle had if by going to the Dreamlight Wiki. But again, I've never really felt the need to care about the hair tags and I've done just fine with Dream Snaps. It's, it, I, I just use hairstyles that I think fit my outfit or fit the theme. I've never let tags determine what hair I use. I've never been bothered enough by it to actually worry about that. And I've got a great history with Dream Snaps performance. So with that said, I, I don't think it's a bad thing they remove tags because now it just equals the playing field for everybody. So if there ever was an instance where a certain hairstyle did give an advantage, we've ever had a hairstyle that did have three of the challenge tags and everybody who used that hairstyle did really good. Maybe that happened and the devs noticed that and they said, ooh, we should have not done that because all of these other people now have less visibility because they didn't use that hairstyle. And yeah, we should probably take these tags away. Maybe that's how it went down. Who knows? At the end of the day, it, it doesn't impact me and I don't think Think this will impact most people because I feel like most people I know and myself, we don't really care about the tags on the hair when we pick our hair. We typically pick a hairstyle that just goes good with the challenge and the theme and the outfit. So yeah, I mean, I'm indifferent about this. I don't feel like it's a big deal, but if I had to say good or bad, I'd say it's good, you know, like cool. Next up, we have an update on Valley Visits added the ability to buy and sell items at Goofy's stall during Valley Visits. Well, that's interesting. Okay, uh, a cool new thing that nobody asked for, but I like it. And then we have, oh, this is a good one. Added the ability to have animal companions follow you during Valley Visits. Also, my comments about the Goofy stall, I'm just kidding. I think that actually will be a big deal for new players. So if you're brand new to the game and you go visit your friend who has all the biomes unlocked, well, you can go buy some pumpkins or I mean, or they could just stop being stingy and buy the pumpkins for you and drop them. I mean, you know, like, come on, help your friends out. But yeah, you at least now you can, if you go to somebody else's valley and you don't have all the biomes unlocked, you can actually go purchase things that you don't have access to that can help you in a lot of different ways. So uh, yeah, I, th I think it can be cool. I don't think there's a lot of utility there for being able to buy things from Goofy's stall, but I think it's neat they added it in. Now for the second thing here, added the ability to have animal companions follow you during a valley visit. I love this. I am really excited about this because one of my favorite things to do during valley visits right now are group photos. And if you pose, if you bring your camera out and you strike a pose, I can take a picture of you doing that pose. You'll be in your camera mode, I'll be in my camera mode, but we've done this with a bunch of other different poses, but we, we weren't able to do animal companion poses yet. Now that we can do animal companion poses, we can get a group of friends together and somebody could do the capybara pose where they're pointing and the other person can have a squirrel and they can be like pointing at the squirrel if you like hide the capybara just right. Or you could do like the hey, hey pose. You can get a group of friends together and pose with your, with your critters and get some really cute pictures. So I think at some point after we burn through the star path and I get some of the lawn stuff, I think we're gonna have a special day on stream where I, I invite you guys over again because we did this before. I had a day, no, I had a whole week where I opened my valley and you guys would come over and take pictures with me. I think we should do this again. And I think this time we should do it with animal companions because it's just gonna be fun. All right, next thing here, we have premium shop changes. Improve the premium shop preview page UI to provide a larger view of the selected item. Okay, you know, if there is one change that I think is necessary in the premium shop, that would probably be it. A lot of the items I've looked at in the preview mode didn't even really look the same as they did in game. If you remember those electric 
trade wings that we got, they were almost yellow in the preview section, but they're red in the game. And there are a lot of items I've previewed where the colors are different, the animation is much better in game than it is in the preview. So maybe by making or giving us a bigger view of the preview, it'll give us a more accurate view of the preview because it hasn't been the most accurate. Hopefully it's real nice and close up so you can really appreciate it. And I think this is just gonna help people know what items they find to be more valuable or enticing. And it probably will lead to some more purchases for Gameloft. Next up under other, reduce the size of time rifts when the hourglass tool is not actively equipped to limit distraction. That's awesome, okay, I love that first sentence. Could we take it a step further and just make them invisible if I don't have my hourglass out? Because I would like that even more. Time rifts will return to their regular size when the hourglass is equipped. Okay, this is really nice. Though I would, I would much rather the time rifts just not be there at all, unless I have the hourglass out. But um, this is a good start. As somebody that does like a lot of recording and streaming, I just don't like those big unsightly time bubbles just always being right in the middle of my scene. So a lot of the times I have to go over to them and then interact with them and then find one item, step out of the circle, and then it'll finally disappear. But I guess this is gonna depend, you know? If, if they've just reduced it, but it's still just as bright and it's like the size of a baseball, it's still gonna stand out and it's still gonna be kind of annoying. So I would love to just toggle off the time rifts. Not to mention the time rifts aren't really worth doing that much anyway. They can give you good items, but if you have a lot of time benders, you're gonna get way better time bending results avoiding those bubbles. Time bending villagers will not duplicate anything you find in the bubbles. So if I have enough time bending villagers to always give me plus four of extra items, why would I wanna go into a bubble and, and get one of several items when I can run around the biome and get you know tons of several items? I just, I think they're unsightly, I think they're not necessary. And honestly, if you have a lot of time vendors, they're a waste of time to even focus on. But who knows, maybe they'll fix them at some point and make it to where your time bending villagers will duplicate the items within them. I don't know, time will tell. <laughs> time, because it's like the time bending and the hour. Improved the reward screen when purchasing an item in the premium shop or opening a chest that contains an item, giving the player a larger view of each individual reward and allowing them to equip or use each of the items directly from this screen. Okay, this is interesting. So as you know, when you purchase an item from the premium shop, you always get that little blue like scene where the little items pop up in those little boxes and they kind of just check off the screen there. Same for like opening certain chests and stuff. So I think it is good that they're gonna give a, a bigger, cause those little squares, I mean, especially if you're on a small screen, like if you're playing on Apple Arcade or you're playing on Nintendo Switch, like you might not be able to see much of what that reward is at all. And also having the option to immediately equip or use those rewards is pretty cool because then you don't have to go in your inventory and hunt it down with filters or scroll through some categories or anything like that. You're just, you know, you can use it right then and there. Next up, it says added an option to sign up for the Disney Dream My Valley newsletter within the cloud save menu. Oh, well, this is interesting. Okay, well, that's cool to see. I don't know how many of you guys are already signed up. I know I'm already signed up with the newsletter, but this is cool. I think this is gonna get way more people signed up with the newsletter, but typically the news they're sharing there is you know, mostly going to be news that is also going to be shared on social, but it does make it easier to keep up with what's going on. And now, oh my God, look, look at how long this list is of uh, bug fixes. I'm excited to read through this for once. Usually with these patch note reviews, I typically just like skip this part and I say, here's the link to the patch notes, look through the bug fixes and see if there's anything that is relevant to you. But for this, especially since I haven't read this yet, I'm, I think I'm gonna pay close attention to these today because out of everything coming in this update. I think one of the things I am just the most excited about and optimistic about are going to be the bug fixes and stability fixes because I just know so many players who have been struggling with stability and experiencing crashes and I I really want that to be smoothed out. I just want everybody to be able to enjoy their experience. So yeah, let's take a look at this and see what kind of, uh, what kind of information we can find here. So right at the top here, it says introduced further optimizations to reduce crash rates on all platforms. We are 
are continuing to keep a close eye on this topic and are exploring additional optimizations for future updates. Introduce further optimizations. I wish they would give us an idea of like what they've done in these patch notes. I know, you know, maybe we'll be able to see it in the game. And it does look like they are still searching for more ways to even further improve stability. Let's just hope it's enough. Let's hope it's way more stable than it was after the last patch because I just know so many players have gotten frustrated and I've talked to many players who said their game is crashing like every half hour or sometimes more. As somebody who's fortunate enough to play on PC, I haven't really been dealing with any crashes, but I feel bad for players that are. And yeah, I can totally make the game unplayable. So I just, if, if they're going to sell the game on all platforms, it needs to work on all platforms. All right, now it looks like the next like five or six things here are going to be from specific quests, sprouting a story, Gaston the hero, flying metal nuisance, village project, restoring the sunstone, a deal with Ursula, escape claws. These all seem to have some kind of fixes. I will have the patch notes linked. If you're having issues with these quests, maybe come check out this segment, refer to this list, but I, I'm not going to read all the quest fixes. Let's move down a little bit. And it looks like they have fixed the issue that caused the game to crash or freeze when cooking certain recipes like the new cupcakes in outdoor spaces. Next up says fixed an issue in which objects would disappear after colliding with the in-game camera. Yes, thank goodness. This was so frustrating during dream snaps. Whenever I would activate my camera and try to get a shot of the foreground, as the camera moved out of selfie mode and collided with my foreground items, they would just vanish. However, I was able to fix this by returning to the main menu, going back into the game, and then I can repeat the whole process and the items wouldn't disappear. But for some people, they said even after restarting, it was still a problem. So I'm really happy to see the disappearing item bug seems to be gone. Fix an issue in which various dresses and socks would clip with the avatar's model and other clothing. Okay, I know there were a lot of complaints about that. I'm not a big fan of clipping, so that's great to see. Fix an issue in which Daisy would not share the time remaining before a new boutique challenge. Okay, very nice. The funny thing is this actually worked when the update first came came out and then when they introduced the patch it just stopped working so i'm glad they've got that fixed fixed an issue in which the gate to eternity isle would remain closed oh i didn't even know about that issue interesting fix an issue in which certain dialogue choices were not selectable <laughs> didn't know about that one either imagine it just giving you like three options and they're like no nah, you, you actually only have one you would never you would never actually say those things and then looking through the rest of these uh fix an issue made it difficult to exit the door in scrooge's store oh nice i actually did know about this one this one was really annoying. I would have to run back and forth in front of the door multiple times. I thought it was just me. I didn't even know <laughs> this was like a actual issue for a lot of players. So that's that's nice. It, yeah, it just wouldn't give me the option to leave and I would have to run back and forth like several times and then I would finally get out. Fix an issue in which the touch of magic door could not replace the basic door in the avatar's house. Okay, good, but I really hope they took my door off the wall because I'm stuck with two doors on my wall because I placed the touch of magic door and it won't let me remove either one of them. So I have a touch of magic door in my living room and then I have a regular door in my living room like right next to it and th there is just no option to remove either door. I hope it automatically removes the touch of magic door off the wall or sets it to where you can only have one door on the wall because yeah, this, this is a pain. Fixed an issue in which the strawberry candy tile and strawberry chocolate candy tile were swapped. Wasn't really aware of that either. Fixed an issue issue in which progression in certain quests was blocked by a game crash or the game closing at the same time as a quest progressing to the next step. Oh wow, that would be so annoying. Yeah, thankfully I didn't have to deal with that one, but imagine trying to advance in a quest and your game just turns off every time. No thank you. Fixed an issue in which the avatar's energy would not refill when entering their house. Fixed an issue in which Oswald would spawn outside of the map. <laughs> Seems like normal Oswald behavior to me. Oh, fixed an issue which prevented certain controllers from being recognized on Mac operating systems. Fix an issue in which some buildings in the valley, notably villagers' houses, would disappear. Fix an issue in which the yellow and blue speckled path would not display correctly. Oh, thank God. Okay. When we first got the Eternity Isle update, these paths were broken. And then they finally got fixed with the lovely monsters update or with the Monsters Inc. update, only to be broken again <laughs> in the Daisy update. So let's hope they don't get broken again after this. Let's hope they're actually fixed for good because I do really like these paths. 
paths and I just want to be able to use them without all the problems. Fixed an issue in which the mystical cave appeared darker than intended. Its lighting has been adjusted. Interesting. I didn't even know it appeared darker. Um, or maybe it's always been darker than intended. I'll have to go in there and look. I did not know about that. Fixed an issue in which gloves and bracelets would display as hovering in midair in Scrooge's store. Fixed an issue in which the avatar's texture would occasionally change after browsing the menu in Scrooge's store. Oh, I think I have seen that. It would be in the neck. Like my textures on my body would be like, my neck would be a different color, a certain part down than my head. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's exactly what it was referring to, but I've noticed that in both Dreamlight Castle and Scrooge's store. Fix an issue in which the environment lighting would change after exiting Scrooge's store on Eternity Isle. This was not just an Eternity Isle bug, dude. This literally happened in, in both the Valley and Eternity Isle. It happens every day on my stream because I'm always live around sunset and every time I go into Scrooge's and come out, all my lights shut down. So yeah, this is not just a Scrooge's store on Eternity Isle. I'm not sure why they put that in there. This happens when you go to Scrooge's store in general. Next up, it says fix an issue in which the avatar would occasionally levitate above the ground in the lagoon area of Eternity Isle. Hmm. I did not know we levitated. That's cool. Fix an issue in which the visual effects for the camera royal tool would be visible while riding attractions. So this one is rather interesting. You know, when we do ride rides, we're riding them using the camera tool. So... I thought, you know, being able to take pictures and put borders and filters on were part of that. So I didn't know this was considered a bug. Fixed an issue in which the visual effects for the camera royal tool would be visible while riding attractions. I mean, but we're using the camera tool while riding attractions, aren't we? Like we can even snap pictures. So I don't know. This is kind of strange to me. Yeah, it's talking about effects like filters, borders uh, for the camera royal tool would be visible while riding attractions. Interesting. Next up, it says fixed an issue in which the ground texture of broccoli would not display correctly. You know, that's funny because I actually removed all the broccoli from my dream garden because of the way it looked. It had this huge bright green square around it and it looks so bad. So yeah, I'm glad they fixed that. I can finally plant my broccoli again. Next up it says fixed an issue in which selected items in edit mode would not become translucent. Fix an issue in which the sun and moon would be visible while inside player houses. Oh yeah, that was pretty funny. And even if the sun was like deeper, like like lower than the ground, it would have this weird wavy texture, but yeah, I could always see the sun and moon when inside the house. Fixed an issue in which discussions between villagers during quest would not pause and resume as intended if the player left their speaking radius. Oh, this is nice. Okay, so I know this is kind of a niche fix, but I ran into this really annoying uh, circumstance where I was doing a quest and two villagers were talking and I would, I was trying to get a picture of something. So I kept stepping away from them, but every time I came back, they would just restart the entire conversation, no matter how far along I had gotten in it. And then I realized, okay, I just have to stand here until they're done. Cause it's gonna, they're gonna restart the entire conversation. If I don't, at least now it kind of saves your progress. If you do walk away, fix an issue in which the leaf strewn path with border would display with a gap between the border and path. Yes. Now, this is also kind of a niche one. I don't know how many of you guys noticed this, but this would only happen one tile thin. It would have the little wooden borders, and then in the center, there would be a little like line of leaf strewn path. Next up, it says fixed an issue in which wearing shorts could result in the avatar's legs displaying incorrectly. Fixed an issue in which the use camera to get on prompt would be displayed on attractions that are not rideable. Interesting. Okay, yep, that's the one that you guys were talking about earlier. And you know what's funny? I never even noticed that it prompt. I never tried to get on like the Tower of Terror. I, I just assumed we couldn't. So I didn't even know we gave you a prompt. Fixed an issue in which the Oswald trolley would not correctly align with the trolley tracks once crafted in place. Fixed multiple issues which impacted the sync between players in valley visits. 
Well, that's good. I know it was really tough, I think, mostly for people on different platforms when they visited my valley, but then there's just so much placed in my valley. It can it can definitely cause some sync issues. And lastly, it says various additional bug fixes relating to audio, visual, localization, gamepad control, and user interface issues in addition to stability improvements. Okay, and that is it. We are at the end of it here. So if you want to review any of these bug fixes, again, I will have these patch notes linked in the video description down below. Overall, I have to say I'm really, really excited about what we've read today in these patch notes. It's great to see them bringing a bit more clarity into the Dream Snap system, as well as giving us some much needed reworks to the edit menu and decor mode. I know it's kind of a niche thing, but I am extremely excited that we can remove the edit mode overlay as it's just going to be absolutely huge for me when it comes to making videos here on YouTube. I'm also really excited that we're going to be able to bring our animal companions when we go to visit someone's valley. And of course, we can't close out the patch note discussion without touching on all of these bug fixes and addressed issues. I'm really hoping they've got the stability really hammered out. It, it does appear that you know even in these patch notes they said they're still continuing to work on it and looking for more ways to improve stability I, I know it's it stability is never gonna be perfect for everybody there's such a wide variety of platforms that this game is available on and also being a game that's available on PCs you know PC is just such a big spectrum you're gonna have some PCs that may struggle to run the game and you're gonna have some PCs that run it very well some older platforms can also struggle to run the game but Gameloft chose to make this game available on those platforms, and they sell it on those platforms at the same price that they do to all the other platforms. And as long as that's the case, this game should 100% work no matter what platform you're playing on. So I really, really hope they, they get these stability issues worked out. With that out of the way, I think that kind of covers everything. I have a lot to think about. I have a lot to take in. I'm probably gonna review these a little bit more and read into them and see you know, if there's anything I really missed. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. Were you excited about what you read today in these patch notes? Is there anything that wasn't mentioned that you would love to see for next time? And oh, and you already know, this isn't all the changes. Dreamlight Valley or Gameloft, they've never put every change into the patch notes. And we almost always get hit with like all kinds of new surprising quality of life changes and fixes. Like each update, there's a bunch of stuff that was just not mentioned. So if, if you're really hoping for a certain feature or something, you know, don't, don't give up just yet. Maybe it'll still come. Who knows what else is waiting for us in just a couple of days. And speaking of, on Wednesday, June 26th, at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I will be live with this update the moment it releases. So if you want to get a first look at the Mulan update and dive into it with us, you can find the link to my Twitch channel in the video description down below. If you found today's video helpful, informative, or simply entertaining, please do me a very big favor and hit that like button as it helps more people find my content. Consider subscribing for more Disney Dream of Valley and gaming content, and I hope you enjoy the Lucky Dragon update.